Uh, hello, my name is Matt Stack, and I'm a solutions architect at NVIDIA. Um, this section will cover the C++ standard language parallelism with our NVIDIA HPC SDK C++ compiler. Um, this will be a brief overview, but hopefully it will give enough background for you to get started. Um, C++ standard parallelism was introduced in C++17. It recently saw an extension in C++20, the most recent version of the standard, and more features are coming in the pipeline for the future um, C++23 and onward. And as Jeff mentioned in our overview talk, this has been a very important feature in the standard, and it has been an investment over many years. Uh, this feature can be implemented by the various algorithms that have been given that have been given an execution policy extension in your code. Um, for example, std um, execution parallel or sequential. Um, I would like to briefly mention some of the classic algorithms such as sort, reduce, um, transform, and for each. Uh, most are pretty self-explanatory if you have not seen them or are not too familiar with the algorithms of the C++ standard library. Um, usually they take iterators and then do whatever the function name is like sort. Um, for each is going to help us a lot in this case because I think it is an easy way to visualize parallelism. And for each applies a function that is given as an argument to each element in the range um, defined by the iterators. And you can think about it like if I wanted to give out different elements of my container without my control of order in which they execute, um, if you use the parallel execution. How would I need to structure my algorithm, which is, tip, which is typically a lambda in this case, or a function object, um, to abide by the rules of good parallelism, um, as Brent mentioned, such as no data races. Um, and that's just something to keep in mind as we go forward. And Brent mentioned this as well, but um, I'll repeat that NBC++ standard parallelism also uses CUDA unified memory for memory management. Um, meaning it is handled by the compiler. OK, um, if you are a C++ developer, um, you may have used CPP reference in the past or maybe every day. Um, I pulled this screenshot to show that after this talk, if you want to explore the options that Stibar enables you, um, look for declarations that have um, a universal reference to a um, execution policy as a parameter. Um, and you can see I boxed this one out. And also, you can see that it is since C17, because that is the um, version of the standard it was introduced. Um, NVIDIA does not own this content. So, you know, it's not like a replacement for actual MVC documentation or anything. Um, and below is a simple, semi complete example with for each using the parallel execution policy. Um, and we have a vector, and we are performing an algorithm on each element in that vector, um, we will, which we will bring the work and the data over to the GPU for execution, and then we will bring it back to the CPU after it's done. And just for note, um, for the future, when you want to give this a try, you want to include um, algorithm and include execution. Uh, just a few details to help you get started. Um, when using the parallel execution policy, um, make sure there are no data races or deadlocks, um, as Brent mentioned, um, because this is left up to the programmer to handle. Um, when you declare um, execution parallel or execution parallel um, unsequenced, the two parallel um, options, you are saying that there is no dependency between iterations and the compiler just um, trusts you. Um, and as we mentioned, Subpar uses CUDA unified memory to handle our data transfers between CPU and GPU for us. And just a note that unified memory requires data to reside in heap memory. Um, so this means std vector is all good. Um, std array would not because it resides on the stack. And 
and quick two notes that um, functions reference do not need to be given the device annotation like they are in CUDA C++ if you are familiar. Um, the, the compiler just automatically goes through the call stack and handles this for you as well, um, like the data. Um, and also execution on the GPU requires um, random access iterators, not, not forward iterators. Um, and to compile using stubpar, um, using our MVC++ compiler, um, use the dash stubpar flag. And we have two options with that. Um, you can use equals GPU, which is the default. So if you specify nothing, this is implicitly dash or um, equals GPU. And you also have equals multi-core. Um, and as Jeff mentioned earlier, um, the save code can be um, can target GPU and multi-core CPU um, by a simple option switch. And this is a very simple workflow that we can walk through. Um, imagine that we have a problem. Um, there's a vector I want to sort. Um, and you can see we have a vector called vec1. And it has, just for this example, 10 unsorted ints. And our solution, um, simply, is just apply the standard algorithm std sort to the vector. Um, and you can see that we're all sorted out below. And stipar comes into play on the far right um, as a potential performance improvement. Um, very easily, we add the std execution par to our function call. Um, and then later, we remember to compile with std par, dash std par. Um, and then that's pretty much all you need to get this code and this data onto the GPU. Um, and I have noticed, I have noted potential improvement here because I will say that if you give a vector of 10 ints, <laughs> to a GPU, and that's it. Um, you won't exactly be breaking light speed. Um, if you think about it, the speed up would need to be at least worth the cost of the data transfer, um, as Brent touched on a little bit. Um, but fortunately, we can just apply our same basic knowledge um, as Brent provided, and we'll touch on just throughout these two days of what makes a good GPU program, and make sure our code follows those same guidelines. Um, and just generally, there needs to be plenty of work and data to keep the GPU happy um, to see a performance increase utilizing the hardware. And um, Jeff already gave a great overview about this cool work that Professor Lat has done with um, the Lattice Boltzmann simulations using Stedpar. Um, I just wanted to advertise it one more time because the GPU, uh, the GTC talks are really good. Um, and I reference them quite a bit. Um, and they're just down here at the bottom. Um, and that's it for the overview. Um, thanks for your time. Um, 